Hi, welcome to the Israel First Television program from our studios in Jerusalem. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us today. We welcome you wherever you're watching and appreciate your company. And we're the program that looks at Israel. We look at the news. We look at what's behind the news and we look at the Hebrew understanding, the spiritual understanding of the events of Israel and the days that we're living in, the end times, the final days before the return of Messiah. Now, one of the stories I've referred this uh, to this story before, but I just felt it really needed uh, re uh, revisiting was the story about the news and the media and the use of AI and clones. Now, it's not something new, but it's something that you would need to understand to, to be able to discern uh, what's happening in the media. Now, in 2023, last year, the Jerusalem Post reported that Israel's ACT News, that's A-C-T News, unveiled an AI-powered news presented by digital avatar clones. This is uh, a digital representation of a person. So in other words, it's you, but it's a digital version of you. Um, sometimes known as deep fakes so in the business. It means that the person is in front of the camera, but in reality, she's going to do her shopping or she's going to do whatever she right. wants. Right. It, it isn't a real person. It's a digital person. Uh, it's a clone. It's a animated, whatever you want to describe it. It's a picture or it's a picture of the person who's uh, on the video. It's not the person themselves. And how it's powered is that using the computer, they can put the text in that the person is saying. So the digital clone has text uh, that's put onto a computer and then they say it's on the uh, television screen. Which is also not always what the person will want to say personally. Right. They can make that person saying whatever they want. Right. Which is but even if they make them saying what, what they want to say, it's still something you need to be aware of. Now, seven months later, since this, we broke this news story on Israel First uh, television program, um, we asked the question, how much are these digital clones being used in the media? At the end of July 2023, Axe News, a growing news content channel according to Jerusalem Post on TikTok now to the W of what it's called the world's first fully AI automated news edition presented by digital avatar clones by the way I'm not sure it was the first because in China there's also been digital clones the Jerusalem Post commented this cutting edge um, approach to news broadcasting could see an, a new standard in journalism but it also raises moral and ethical concerns, to say the least. The introduction of AI-powered digital clones of renowned journalists, including the likeness of Israeli reporters Miri Michaeli and Amit Sigal, represents a paradigm shift in news presentation. By the way, it's, it's very likely that you haven't come across their names because they're doing he the news in Hebrew in Israel. Uh, unless, of course, you're a Hebrew speaker. Uh, the digital clones will deliver live broadcasts on screen. Jerusalem Post comments, on the surface, this development seems like a groundbreaking achievement. It seems like something, you know, the technology is something which is extraordinary. But we are very, very concerned about this development. Um, they're saying it's a groundbreaking advancement in the media landscape. Well, it is. It is. And it's not just in Israel. It's all around the world. Um, one of the key concerns is the potential blurring of lines between human reporters and their AI-driven counterparts. And the same could be said of politicians or anybody, or yes. news presenters yes. or press conferences. We are not able to confirm now whether the people in front of us in a news conference are the people themselves. Viewers might find it challenging to discern, this is what the Jerusalem Post was saying in 2023, whether the news is delivered by an actual journalist or by, the, uh, by their AI avatar. 
raising questions about transparency and authenticity. Moreover, the complete automation of news content and script formulation through artificial intelligence also invites ethical questions. While AI can pro uh, process vast amounts of data efficiently, there remains the risk of unintentional bias biases or inaccuracies uh, in the way that the stories are generated. In other words, let me put it like this. If you have an AI-generated clone in front of you in a news conference or a press conference or in whatever setting in front of you in a media setting, you don't know uh, when they say things whether they are true or not. If they are human, there is a, a responsibility on that person to present, in theory, in, to present the truth and to present um, what's happening. But when it's a digital clone, we don't know. Uh, some people might say, well, we've already had inaccuracies for years and years. Does it make so much difference? Well, yes, it does, because um, we are in an age where we don't know if it's the person themselves or not. I know. You know, I'm, I'm thinking even like if somebody die, you mm -hmm. can still make them saying things. Right, right. Which is totally... Right, there is already... I mean, where is the truth and where is the illusion? Right, which is already happening. They're already doing that. Um, they're not in a new setting as far as I'm aware, but they're already doing it for people who are bereaved to have the deceased person in an avatar form true, speaking right. and making... Uh, this is a, a paid service as far as I know that you you pay this service and they reproduce the deceased person saying things to you uh, which is um, uh, given to them to say and so you can have a kind of a conversation. Uh, I would say that um, grief counsellors and psychiatrists are saying it's not good because there has to be a process of, uh, during the process of grief, of departure of the person, the person has departed. And this is really um, not helping in one way. <clears throat> However, some people have found it helpful. And it's, it is interesting because it sets the scene for what's happening in the media generally that you need to be aware of, that there's a whole sh shift. In fact, there's a whole shift in the whole world with AI Yes. Uh, most famously represented by uh, ChatGPT, but by many other AI systems that are coming in. In if you're in a workplace, you'll know about this. That many that there are many AI systems are being used now, um, and you can say that they're useful. Sometimes AI is something that replies to you. For example, if you contact a website and the people are not there, you get a, a, a chat box and you can talk to the chat box but it's not an actual person, it's an AI software system um, that is programmed with all the information about that website uh, to answer your questions. Now, coming back to the uh, Jerusalem Post, coming back to the media, coming back to AI avatars, um, human uh, journalists are responsible for fact-checking, context contextualizing information Nuanced perspectives in their reporting, relying solely on AI, could potentially lead to one-dimensional representations, which is quite strange in a way, because they are one-dimensional. One, um, one of the ways you say, well, how can I spot uh, an AI clone from a real person? Well, you'll notice that it's very one-dimensional. There's no depth of field. Uh, because they can't be, and they're trying to make depth of field with um, artificial intelligence, but it isn't quite the same yet, although they're improving all the time. Um, and of course, there's depth of uh, an analysis by a AI journalist. It's not going to give you an in-depth thing unless it's told to. Um, there's also the responsibility, by the way, in the middle of all of this, the responsibility of job security for journalists, a lot of journalists, and I've spoke about that before in, in, in Israel, in the Ynet News Network, uh, were losing their jobs because of the introduction of AI into Ynet. Um, so there's a, a, a big move, Natalie in this whole area of AI and in the whole area. And ethically, ethically, there is a lot right. of questions. And, you know, a professor 
uh, there was a professor of, of computer science at Arizona State Un University said this, in the long run, I think it will be impossible to distingu distinguish between the real and the fake. That will be, it'll be very, very hard when we look at press conferences, news conferences, um, news journalists, it'd be very difficult to tell which is real um, and which is just a video representation of that uh, person. So this is um, something very concerning. It's part of the, the last day's scenario. It's not something to be afraid of, but it's something to be aware of and be sensitive about, um, which goes, by the way, for all media, not just for video, not just for television, but also for newspapers and other situations where we're seeing um, uh, pictures that are not real. Um, yes. So, and I think if you're on social media, you'll be more aware of this, that there's a lot of things on social media which are suspect. So at the end of the day, what, well, what, how do we approach this, Martin? What's the best uh, way of dealing with it? Well, we have to have discernment because in these end times, there will be deception. There is a great deception. In fact, one of the scripture, the Bible tells us that there'll be a great deception even of the elect if that was possible and that's what we're seeing another issue which we've seen in israel which is uh, more recent is the trauma from the uh, uh, war from what happened on october 7th from all the things natalie that have been happening in israel since that time and israel national news uh, reported on a study which has said that Israel, Israelis perceived time since October 7th is as one long day, the longest day, you could say, in a way. Israel, Israel's Bar Ilan University researchers found that personal uh, or nationwide trauma, traumatic events disrupt our perception of time. Uh, many people have, uh, maybe, maybe you've experienced it yourself, but in traumatic situations, time seems to slow down. An article published recently in the American Psychological Association Journal, Psych Psychological Trauma Theory Research and Practice and Policy, presents an extensive theoretical literature review that aims to conceptualize and establish a new theoretical understanding regarding the relationship between exposure to, to trauma and disruption of time perception. Mm -hmm. In other words, you find that time is disrupted and that Isra Israelis are living in one long day, Natalie. They are living in one long, it's a long, very long 24 hours, but it seems to be lasting forever. It seems to be an eternity. Five months now. Right. Now, the research was left by ha Hava Tritel as part of her thesis under Professor Inat Levi-Gigi from the Bar-Ilan University Faculty of Education. It seems, that this is what they are saying, that the issue of time perception changes as a result of exposure to trauma. Uh, as I said at the beginning, that when... We, if you're in an accident or something, time seems to slow down. Many um, psychologists would say, or uh, people have researched this area, that it isn't time, but the brain actually slows the time down for you. Uh, whether the, Whichever way that is, maybe even time slows down. We don't know. There are certain things in life that uh, we don't understand, but it's one of the things that is happening on a, na a national level in Israel. Now, the reason I bring that up is that if you're living outside of Israel, you won't be aware of this, that the nation is going through trauma. And the all is really the all the nation. The whole country. Yes. Uh, everybody. Yeah. Um, there are no exceptions. Yeah. The, uh, because of the media which is good in one way, that it, 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 it's updating them as to what's happening. They're also living in this trauma on a daily basis. Yes. They're um, exposed all yes. the time yes. to this trauma. Now, this is interesting because when you speak about that, even when you were speaking about the illusion of the AI, 
this reminds me while I'm reading and we are reading together a book which is called The Last Slave, which is a story of what's happened during the redemption of the Hebrew people in Egypt. And there was the same, and it, and it was very interesting, when, um, when Moses was changing the water, it was real. But when the magician was changing the water, it was an illusion. So it seems like the to river be... from the River Nile. Yes, yes, and and, and not only that, it it was like all the water from everywhere was changed into blood when Moses did it. But them, it was only an illusion. So it's very interesting. It's like it seems to say that it's right, but it's not right. And it's like an illusion. And the AI is the same, it's an illusion. And now you are speaking about the trauma. And the whole nation of the Hebrew people were in trauma because everybody was concerned and were becoming slave of the Egyptian. It was like slowly, slowly, but deeper and deeper. And and they had to arrive to a point saying, God save us. Because they couldn't, if, if they were trying by themselves saying, okay, it's okay. Okay, we can still make it. And he's like, so they were still make it. But after a while they were in, in a place saying, okay, now we can't make it anymore. And when they started to cry to God, God immediately moved to them. And he's like, I'm really seeing that right now where we are here in Israel, there is a cry, there is not yet a cry out to God. It's like they are trying by themselves. But, and you see, the, you see the country going deeper and deeper in, in crisis on every level. Yeah. And, and, and we need to pray. This is, if you want to pray, and I know a lot of people are praying for Israel, is like that the people we really pray saying, okay, now we need to turn to him. He's like, we can't make it ourselves. Which is interesting, if I just carry on. Like even us, we are affected by all the things that's happening. And one night I was awake and I was saying just very clearly to God, I mean, very honestly saying, I'm drowning. And straight away he answered me saying, do the plank, which means like lay down in the water, and let your body be carried by the water. And it is me. And he was really showing me that the water was living water. Ma'in Chaim was saying in Hebrew that they were carrying me. And he said, and you, you just look at me. And this is, this is where we are at when the full redemption will come. Is that we are turning to him. And so many times, even us, like so many times we are trying to find solution, like human solution. And more and more we can see there is no human solution because when is the time of redemption for the whole world, and we know we are into that, is like, is all of us who has to turn to God and say, okay, save us. We need the Messiah, we need the Savior. Yeah, and it's happening in every, every nation is affected <clears throat> by, these, by these events, by AI, by the digital clones, you know, they, they, this is happening everywhere at the same time. You know, it's a part of the part of the redemption, part of the baby being born, part of the yeah. contractions, part of all of the the stress that people are living in. And but in Israel, Israel is, of course, first, not uh, uh, because Israel is special in one way, but because um, God looks at the Jewish people. He looks at the Jewish nation. Israel is the place where Messiah will come. It's the holy city of Jerusalem. It's the place of the climax of the nation mm -hmm. of all time, of all the battles. Yeah. It's no. going to be where the last battle happens. So, yeah. But this is interesting also what you say, because mm. you see like the Jewish people are saying that every nation, God gave angels to be like over the nations and... He, they are in contact with God, but is not God is not directly in connection with that country. But he said, and it's written in few places, that his eyes are on Israel from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. He said, okay, you are my peculiar people. And it's not that they are 
special. Yes, they are special because they were chosen. They are not special in one way, but they, because they've been chosen, because gave, God gave them a very important job was like to be the light to the nations. So he has given to every nation something to do. And like he gave to every family, like a specific work to do. And so we can see it also as nations and Israel is a nation to light, to be the light to the nation. So this hasn't changed. And, that, and it's very important that you understand that when we say that, it's not uh, supporting the government, it's supporting the people. Yes. It's very different yes. uh, because the two things are now clashing with everything that's happening. Um, right. And so it's very important that you differentiate the support of Israel with the government and with the people. Um, the, it's two different things. They're two different entities completely. And... Uh, as it is in many yeah, the, as it is in the any country. people of Israel. God loves the people. He's um, and, Israel. Right. And he loves the Holy Land. The government, uh, if they're doing the right thing, may have the approval of God. But if they're doing the wrong thing, they won't. And, so, and you're right. And, and when you say that, it reminds me also like all the governments, like because he's coming with his government, kingdom government, is a cry now. In a way, is the dismantlement of dismantlement. Yeah. That's right. Dismantlement. Dismantlement yeah. of all the governments, the worldly governments, and we can see, we can see all around the world. It's like obviously we can see it more here, but we can see all around the world when we speak with people from different countries. We can see that it's dismantled too, because we need to say there is only Him. En lo. And, oh, I can't remember how to say it, Milvado. Um, anyway, it's like, in Hebrew, it's like, there is only him. He's the only solution for the world. And he's, like he said, every knee will bow, willingly or not, but every knee will bow and say that he is God and he's Echad, he's the one holy God. Right, and you know, it's interesting, Natalie, that... Uh, in Israel, we are under this tremendous pressure, um, whether uh, you're aware of that or not, but there is a huge pressure, which is um, on all sides, not just uh, in the Gaza region, but in the whole of the country. Um, a lot of people were evacuated from the southern communities and the northern, community, northern communities. It's true that some are going back to the, where they come from, but there's a lot who are displaced and are, as we come into the studio today, still displaced. How many months later is it? Five months. Five months later, mm -hmm. they are still uprooted uh, from their home, from their friends, from their communities, from the countryside. A lot of them are now in or have been in hotels, a lot of them are living in accommodation, which isn't anything like they were living no, in before. No, it's not natural to live in a hotel. Like a right. family is like the whole family. So all the the system of the bait of the house is not in a hotel. Right. So you can imagine it's, it's, it's very uh, disturbing for all the children and the family and... And even, I would say, the couple, I'm sure, because right. you can't live the same way. And uh, these people were people from the south who were used to a rural setting, not living in, a, in hotels, but they were living, you know, in, in, with, the, with the countryside. They were with the, where they could take their bicycle and, and ride, where they, where they could walk around, where there were animals, where, where it was, um, there was freedom and children could wander around. And now they're in a very restricted area and it's very interesting because this is the whole country is like that even though uh, not everybody is been evacuated at the moment but and not everybody um is being moved and into accommodation somewhere but everywhere people are feeling restricted the economy is suffering um we were uh, recently in a shopping center not so far away and it is, you know, the, 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 the feeling is down. It isn't a, there isn't a joy 
that they used to be in Israel because everyone is feeling this pressure. Uh, it was interesting that he was mentioning a book and in the book it talks about a sh shortness of breath or being having mm -hmm. um, which, difficult to, difficulty to breathe. Which is one of the signs of stress. And this was like again about uh, the Hebrew people and it's written in Hebrew. It's written when they speak about the Exodus, they say shortness of breath. Now it's very sad because I looked in all my translations English and French, and they don't say shortness of breath. I just find it in one uh, Jewish translation, and they were saying uh, that name, which is like the Hebrew name. They were trying to give like the explanation of it, but no, you, you have to see. And when I saw it written, because I know we were under stress, and I was like, oh, this, was what, this they, is what they were. And, and you can see the parallel, like in so many things in so many levels that we are in the redemption it's it's the it's the birth pangs of messiah it's the the birthing the labor pains we are being pressurized for this birthing and so we're going through that that's it and it would be beautiful on the other side that's right? it <laughs> that, that's what i was coming to that uh, messiah is coming and so this is all leading up to that and we're going through that just like the Natalie was saying that in the book, the Hebrews coming out of the land of Egypt had to go through all the plagues and then through the uh, the Red Sea. All of that experience, the pressure, pressurized, the pressurized experience of going through all of that was for the redemption so they could come to the land of Israel. And now we're in the final redemption where the whole world will be liberated. And, Amen. That's, and that's what we're looking forward to. Well, it's been great to be with you today. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, please visit the website. A lot of information on there. That's uh, www.israelfirst.org. And remember, it's because of your support that we're able to, to do this program. That it's because of our friends uh, who are faithfully supporting us that we're able to come into your homes. Please consider helping us because that will be a great encouragement for us. And, and please contact us and let us know where you're watching uh, the program. Uh, anywhere in the world, we'd love to hear from you. And remember, we're the program that looks at the land, the people and the language.